pre-show music. This is the pre-show music. Pre-show music playing strong. Pre-show music playing long. This is the pre-show music. So you can relax and have a good time. While you wait for pictures to appear. Oh crap, what is that? Screen's done. Okay, well. My wife is gonna have to monitor their screens being done. Peer pre show music. It's the best thing in the world. Pre show music. Tell me what rhymes with world. Pre show, pre show, pre show music. Pre show music here. Everybody sing pre show music. This is the. Seriously, you all have to sing. Show music. Pre show music playing strong. Pre show music playing long. This is the pre show music. So you can relax and have a good time while you wait for pictures to appear. Pre show music. It's the best thing in the world. Pre show music. Tell me what rhymes with world. Pre show, pre show, pre show music. Pre show music. music. All right. Okay. Everybody hear me all right? Hello, Kyle. Hello, Joel. Thanks for coming out, guys. Let's see. Do I have any other timers that are going to be going off? That was... unacceptable. Um, I'll have various timers that, that are going to go off all night because I am under the tyranny of the timers. As I mentioned many times in the podcast and in various videos that I record. So we're going to get one at 7 o'clock. We'll get one at 7.30. We'll get one at 7... I can turn off the one at 7.45. Uh, we'll, I can turn off the one at 8, actually. And I'll keep the one at 9, just so I don't lose track of time there. But no, I can turn these others, these others off, too. 7, 7.30. I just got to remember to turn them back on, because I do need the tyranny of the timers to keep my life in some semblance of order. Otherwise, I just lock into something and totally forget about the rest of the world and what's going on. And so as much as I hate my timers, they are a necessary tyranny. All right, well, welcome. Um, this is the first Christian Geek Central community backlog burn. I've done live streams themed around a backlog burn in the past, but it's always been my backlog. Games that uh, I own and have not squeezed all the enjoyment out of, either because I haven't finished them, uh, like finished the main story, or because uh, th there, there's extra activities and stuff that I totally could reasonably enjoy um, and, uh, and that I haven't uh, yet. And I figured this is... Well, I, I wanted to do a community backlog burn because I wanted to do some small thing to possibly remind you guys that you likely have some games that are great that you could still get more enjoyment out of without buying any new games. That you could have a pause on your game spending for a time if you wanted to. Uh, either out of necessity, because a lot of people are in financial uh, hard times right now, or maybe just because you want to uh, get your spending under control for whatever reason, or maybe there's something else that you're saving for that you want to direct your money toward, saving for a down payment on a house, or maybe considering uh, how you could support your church more, or another ministry that you're aware of more. All kinds of reasons um, that are valuable, that, that are worth us taking a look at our finances and seeing, okay, well, how, how can I stretch things a little bit? So, um, so this list is constructed of games that are part of quote unquote your backlog. And the way I got that, these are mostly suggestions. I've got a list of 10. I'm not going to play all 10. I'm going to play four of them, but I'm going to go through the list of 10. Kind of like a year ago when I did uh, the Bang for Your Buck themed live stream. I had at least 10, maybe 20 or 25. I can't remember how many it was. And I, I went through the whole list for your 
information for your edification, but I'm, I only have time to play a few, so. Uh, and I wanted to give about 50 minutes to each game that I played tonight, so. Um, these are mostly suggestions that uh, viewers and listeners in the Christian Geek Central content community um, uh, gave that are part of their backlogs that are also ranked highest in the backlog category at howlongtobeat.com uh, with one thing that one game I threw in which was Bioshock and I threw that in just be, uh, both because I wanted to you know it's one of the top backlog games on how long to beat um, and I also felt like playing it again and so yeah that's why that's in there it's a list of 10 gonna play for it tonight uh, I'll count down through each one try to give each a little bit of shine as I uh, as I make my way through them. But, uh, the, so the first one that I'm only going to mention, but number 10 on the list, is No Man's Sky. And over at How Long to Beat, and this just beats Mass Effect Andromeda by 100 people. Um, so 100 more people own No Man's Sky, according to, you know, those who uh, volunteered their information at howlongtobeat.com. Um, so 100 more people. Uh, so 2,100 users. Uh, own No Man's Sky and have every intention of getting around to playing it because they, uh, they would like to, um, but they haven't yet. So that's a lot of people, a lot of people. Uh, th these aren't necessarily going to be the best games in the world or the most popular games in the world. It's an interesting kind of category, the, the backlog category, because these are games that like people feel like, I should play that for whatever reason. Just because I bought it and I have it, or because, oh, this is a game that's really highly respected and celebrated, and so... I kind of feel like I should give it a try sometimes, so it's on my bucket list. Although in my mind, a bucket list and a backlog are two different things. Because on a bucket list, you don't necessarily own that game. The idea with a backlog is that you, you own it. You bought it at some point, but you just haven't finished it or haven't, maybe you haven't even started it yet. So uh, number 10, No Man's Sky. It has an 83 on Metacritic, if that means anything to you. And GameSpot uh, said, as of the Beyond update... Uh, of No Man's Sky. The drastic improvements made to No Man's Sky and its Beyond expansion are the new gold standard for how to gracefully cope with the game's flaws post-release. The game laid the foundation with its release, but it took Beyond to elevate it into something magnificent. Successfully transitioning to VR is a creative victory on its own, but realizing just how full and vibrant and rewarding an experience this game has now become is almost poignant. Beyond, No Man's Sky Beyond, represents the courage of convictions, a concept that has not only met the lofty exp expectations it set forth, but transcended them. So I, you know, I don't necessarily uh, think of GameSpot or any of the other kind of uh, review snippets that I'm going to read tonight, that I'm going to share tonight. Mostly I'll be playing games, not reading to you guys, <laughs> just to be clear. Um, but I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't like stack, oh my gosh, GameSpot or IGN said, oh, I'm just trying to give you a little snapshot of the zeitgeist, the general feeling about some of these games. And, and so, yeah, No Man's Sky, there's a pretty decent likelihood that you've got this one in your library. And it's one of those games that almost honorarily is automatically in your backlog because there's just kind of almost infinite potential to it. But uh, yeah, g great, uh, great experience that I have with that. One more game I'll mention before I get to the first game I'm playing tonight, and that's number nine on our list, Monster Hunter World. No, I am not going to play Monster Hunter World tonight. If it was my backlog, I would. I was just playing it a little bit before <laughs> I got on here. But uh, 2,800 users uh, have it in their backlog over at How Long to Beat. Dot com, and there's a good chance that it's in your backlog as well. It got a 90 score on Metacritic, and IGN said, This is the most audacious Monster Hunter game yet. Monster Hunter World manages the balance between staying true to the series' ideals and the addictive loop of combat with intimidating monsters and meaningful upgrades that fans love, while also taking a dramatic leap into a look, feel, and size that, truly fe that feels truly new. Its sheer depth and the commitment required is still intense, but it clearly isn't Capcom's aim to court a casual crowd. It's as all-consuming and incredible a ride as ever. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've felt a little bit bumpy about my enjoyment, specifically of the Iceborne expansion on Monster Hunter World lately. Um, in fact, just, I think, on the podcast I recorded for this week, was, like, unsure... I can't remember what I said about it. I, from week to week, I'm, I'm, like, jazzed about it, and then I'm like, ah, no, you know. But I've gotten 600-plus hours out of it, and 400 of those at least, probably closer to 500 or more, were just like, I love these hours, I love all of this. So, um, anyway, uh, hi, Rugged Warrior, welcome. And Gabriel Stinson, 
Hey guys. Okay, and so now the first game that I'm going to play for tonight, uh, and that is number eight on the list, Final Fantasy XV. 3,000 users over at HowLongToBeat.com have this in their backlog. It got an 82 score on Metacritic, and uh, IGN said there is so much good here, so much heart, especially in the relationships between Noctis and his sworn brothers. It just comes with some changes and compromises that were at times difficult for this longtime Final Fantasy fan to come to grips with. And that's a bit of, of my story with this one. Uh, let's see here, I gotta swap, plug in my headphones here. That is a bit of my story with this one. Um, it's not that I, when I tried this one, you can watch my review of the first five hours of it. It's not that I had a terrible experience here, and I've always kind of, I've been haunted a little bit by this game, wanting to kind of come back to it, give it another try. Never quite wanted to spend money on it. I almost bought it once because at uh, GameSpot, or GameStop, excuse me, you could get it, the, the original, not the Royal Edition, which is what I'm about to play, um, but the, uh, the, the just the base edition. Um, it was like, I don't know, $5 to get the disc, so I almost pulled the trigger, but then when I ended up getting PlayStation Plus so that I could play games long distance with a friend in California, this came with uh, the super, whatever the collection is for PS5 owners, um, and can you get it on, play? Can, I think the PlayStation collection is just for PS5 owners. Anyway, uh, it's a PS4 game, but I got the Royal Edition, and uh, yeah, so I have access to it, it was a significant game on the list here, and so I wanted to give this uh, this one another try. So, let me set my timer for 50 minutes, and we'll give that to Final Fantasy XV. Joel Nelson says, I've got the stream playing on my phone and TV, and there's about a six-second delay between them. This should be interesting. <laughs> All right. So... Some things that you know, some things that I really like about this game. I like the aesthetic visual design, and I love that it went open world. Really cool. I'm a longtime classic Final Fantasy fan, more of the the turn-based uh, classic JRPG feeling ones. A Final Fantasy for fans and first timers. I remember reading that when I did the review and was like, oh well, we'll see. And I think it's more for first timers than it is for longtime fans, but. I don't know. I, I certainly know that, that some longtime fans really enjoyed it. The series really started iterating on itself a lot. Uh, even as early as, like, I don't know, 8? Around 8, maybe? Um, certainly once it hit, like, uh, 11 and 12. And so I can see how some fans, maybe part of the Final Fantasy experience to them is that iteration and things changing significantly every game, but... I, I miss a number of things that they let go of. But I really want to try and focus on, you know, uh, for the sake of those of you who have this in your backlog, and statistically speaking, there's a decent probability that some of you watching have this game in your backlog. Um, so I want to uh, focus on kind of the positive elements that would maybe lead you to, to, to give it another shot or come back to it. Um, so right now... Like, I, I'm giving myself over, like, I, my, my initial feelings was, I, you know, I don't, I definitely don't like the voice acting. I turned the voice acting off, okay? Prob well, no, I don't think I did. I think I had to actually turn it back on. Because it won't turn off in cutscenes, even if you turn it off in, in your options the rest of the time. So I think I'm just kind of accepting the voice acting. And it's, it's, not, as, it's not as bad as I could, you know, easily have an attitude about it. For. Um, and I'm just kind of accepting the, the styles of the clothing here. This is, you know, obviously this is not practical adventure wear, especially not out in the desert as we are. Uh, let's see here. Search for the headhunter. Okay, let's go look for this headhunter. Um, but, you know, I just kind of think, okay, well, you, you definitely like a lot of movies where style takes precedent over practicality and so just try to embrace that here and so i i have been i've played this game for since reinstalling it i don't know maybe about an hour hour and a half Any oh time. who what what is that okay oh yeah that's right i got the wait timer turned on so let me actually just hold down the attack button Oh, jeez. 
Oh my gosh. Is that everybody? No, not yet. Oh, now it is. Okay. Onward. Yep. So that was a lot of me just kind of holding down circle to keep the attacks going. If I would have let go, it would have gone into that wait mode, which you can turn off and just keep it totally, you know, real time. Um, and what I am kind of, <clears throat> what I'm kind of doing to try and embrace it this time around is accept the groove of it, accept some of the seeming simplicity of it. Yes, early on, fights are so far involving just holding down circle, but you know what? In early turn-based gameplay of Final Fantasy games, you're mostly just selecting attack, you know? Um, the car rides, oh, which, gosh, this is... I'm gonna have to jog a mile to get there. I guess maybe I should have taken my car. Can I fast travel there? Have I unlocked that? Let's see. Um, oh, no, no, I have to be at my car to fast travel. Okay, we'll just jog. We'll take the scenic route. And that's... That idea of taking the scenic route... Oh, crap. This guy might cause me problems, though. I don't think I'm... Imperials above us! Thanks. I don't think I'm up for a fight with uh, that rhinoceros thing. I think I tried that once before and got my butt handed to me. Um... But, like, the car... Once you, un once you visit places, you can unlock them for fast travel, you know, using your car. But, uh, oh, here's another fight I could get into. Cut it out, man! Are they really above us? Oh, they're back there. Did they just drop some squad dudes? I don't know. We're gonna keep going this way. But, like, I love the, I, I love the quality of the music. I mean, they... You can always count on these games to have some really great production values. Let's see, what, what's my, uh, what's my, oh, my level is seven, so I should be able to handle these guys. All right, let's do it. Let's get in there. What are these guys, anyway? Me Mez... Mesmanir. Mesmanir. Okay. And then I think I, yeah, R1, I can learn things about them. So that's telling me what some of his weaknesses are, maybe. So fire does extra damage, ice does less, and I don't know what that last symbol is. Uh, Kyle Fritz says, the only RPG I played was Earthbound. Hey, if you're only going to play one, that's a pretty good one to play, especially of the classic turn-based JRPG variety. Rugged Warrior says, Final Fantasy Road Trip. Yes. <laughs> like, that could be the subtitle. Final Fantasy Road Trip. And that's what I want to. That's what I want to give myself to. I wasn't open to that experience, um, because I just gotten used to open worlds that were constantly keeping me engaged. You know, and I think one of the things I'm learning about how to get through your backlog and really get the most out of your backlog is to accept the down times. You know, with sales that started on places like Steam and GOG, now moving over to consoles, the console space, and you can have crazy sales with crazy deep discounts that you just kind of find yourself feeling compelled to buy because you're like, well, this is my chance. This is just a good value. It's kind of like in your mind, at least in my mind, it's like, this is a good value. I should get this. And so you get it, and that's how, that's how your backlog forms. Um, and then when you have all these games or when you can get games really cheaply or... As the case may be, you're an adult now. When you were a kid, you could only pr afford one game a quarter or a year or something like that, or you'd have to count on them being gifted to you. Now, with a much more disposable income, you can just find yourself with a backlog, and, and I can find myself much more easily uh, ready to bounce off, as they say, something in favor of something that, that will give me that, that rush of like, wow, this is new, this is cool, this is awesome. And I've lost the virtue of um, waiting out the slow parts of a game in order to experience the high parts, you know, because games are built with kind of a pacing in mind. And so I want to I wanna return to a place that was once forced on me as a child where I had to learn to appreciate the weaknesses or maybe the slow parts of a game or the less enjoyable parts of the game so that I could experience the high points. I want to... I want to reacquire that capacity uh, in a way that has kind of atrophied in me in the last 10 years. 
Eyes oh, yes. Mouth closed. Hello. Getting by. Here goes nothing. My HP's doing good. I'm still just holding circle, but let me see here. I think there's... Where's that, uh... Oh, there it is. So I can do this thing... Mark... I don't know what mark... I can't remember what these skills do. Let's try this. Okay. Alright, I wasn't really following what just happened there, but... <laughs> Okay, I was not... Let's see. Attack this guy. Wait, what are you doing? Whoa! Oh, okay. Was that because he did the mark thing first? That Was that part of marking, maybe? I don't know. I can't tell. Why is he not attacking? Um... Hmm. I am not attacking for some reason. I don't know why. Stay strong, not. Yep. Sorry. Oh, there's a whole bunch more of those bad guys. Yeah, I'm kind of stuck on this uh, mark mode. I guess. I thought selecting it again would maybe turn it off and put me back in normal attack mode, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Wow. So that was some kind of team effort, I guess. Uh... See, so yeah, I spent a little time with this game, I thought, like, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll remember the gist of how to make things work, but I have lost my ability to attack somehow. Oh, wait a minute. Oh! Oh! This! Okay, at some point while I was trying to bring up the team command menu, I hit the cross pad button down and that locked me into blizzard mode. So I was wasting all my blizzard spells. When actually, this is what I want. Okay, now. There we go, there we go. He can be taught, folks. Conference says I'm going to try to get into RPGs. Well, if you can find a love for them, there are a ton of great ones. Around yes. here. And all kinds. Now, RPG used to mean something very specific, you know, when I was in my teens and 20s. Um, it was JRPG or bust, really. But then there was the Western Invasion with... Uh, um, well, of course, PC games have been Western for a while, but the, the Western Invasion in the console space with Bethesda and Morrowind, um, The Elder Scrolls Morrowind. And from there, I think consoles just saw more and more of different types of RPGs. Uh, let's see here. Rugged Races have recently decided to only buy games from the money I get from the recycling bottles, currently saving, uh, currently saving up for Kenna Bridge of Spirits. Okay, cool. I'd be interested to hear what you think of that game after you play it. I'm very curious about it myself, especially thematically. All right. We're halfway. Oh, wait. Is that a treasure on my mini-map? What is this? Nice. Garnet bracelet. Now, what does that do? Let's see here. Okay, so it's... A bracelet set up with garnet enhances strength slightly. I think I want to keep this stamina badge, because I like to just be able to sprint as much as possible. And hey, they give me the crunchy boots. These actually aren't the crun quite crunchy boots, but I mean, they're, they're like dress. Sh it really sounds like Overhead. it sounds like I would expect. I mean, they're wearing these these shiny dress shoes. That's what I would expect them to sound like. Okay, let's see if these guys are actually going to drop down and attack us now. I better. Uh, yeah, those are definitely bad guys. I better save, just in case this is a dumb idea. Kyle Fritz says, I think I'll start with Pokemon and Undertale. Oh, cool, yeah. I've never played either the Pokemon franchise or 
Undertale. Of the two, I think I would probably try Undertale, just because I've heard it... Uh, it's designed really to appeal to people that have grown up playing games. Oh, that's a lot of them. I don't know if I can fight all of those guys. I don't know, like, what level they are. Oh, level six. So they are... What are you doing? Oh, did I got... Oh, I got captured or something. I'm stasis uh Oh, and now these monsters are coming too. How do I get out of that? Alright. Okay, let's, uh, let's actually... Oops, no, no, not what I wanted. Let's focus on this guy here. Yeah, production values on these games are always great. Enemy designs, uh, I think I've never been disappointed in the enemy, de enemy designs. Uh, just the visual aesthetic of enemies in a Final Fantasy game. And this game's no exception. Don't die on me. Why does he keep saying don't die on me? Because I am just fine. I am pretty... I'm feeling pretty powerful right about now. Nem I would like to wrap that up more quickly. Let's see. Am I... I wonder if I have a difficulty option. Yeah, I do. I've got it on easy, so that's why I feel awesome. I'm going to remain feeling awesome for now. <laughs> as I'm getting my feet wet. <laughs> Maybe if I end up sticking with this game, I'll dial it up a little bit. I do like the more realistic visual aesthetic, as, as opposed to the oversized head, spritey type look that Ugh. Final Fantasy games can uh, often have throughout their, their history. Uh, and so anytime they've made the choice to go with realistic proportions and realistic visual designs, I think of Final Fantasy VIII is one example, probably the first most notable example of when they were like, oh, okay, they're really going for something that's leaning more toward realism. I tend to like like that a lot more. Imperials above us! Thanks. Well, Mesmin here in front of us. So let's take care of that. No, not. All right. I'm good. Never miss. These guys gonna chase me? Have they already spotted me? No, maybe not. Okay. I think another significant element in in embracing my backlog uh, has to do with contentment this and learning contentment. That's something that uh, a tricky beast. Oh! Here goes nothing. No use hanging around here. Indeed. It's an interesting factoid. As I was kind of like preparing for this stream and just kind of thinking about maybe like some little notes I'd want to share, little things here and there. There's a a book called um, Your Money Counts. It's a, written by a Christian author named Howard Dayton, and uh, who also. Um, I think is one of the minds behind the, um, what's it called? There's a Sunday school curriculum called Crown, Crown Ministries, Crown Ministries. Anyway, um, well, no, what hit me? What? he makes the observation that the Bible offers 500 verses on prayer, fewer than 500 verses on faith, but more than 2,350 verses on money and possessions. Um, and, uh, We'll have fun. Oh, crap. No, no, no. That's 12. We're getting out of here. We're getting out of here. No, guys. Run. Run. That is level 12. We're leaving. <laughs> but it's... 
It's interesting how our money, our possessions, the way we spend it, the way we use them, the way we think of them. The color's amazing. Um, if we're willing to take a hard look at it, can really tell us some things about where we're at in our relationship with God. And in our engagement with what he wants us to be doing with our lives. It's not as simple as, you know, uh, don't spend money on fun things. You know, we can't get there from, from scripture. Uh, but I, scripture is dead on when it, uh, well, when Jesus says, I got this one written down too, Matthew 6, 21 in the ESV says, for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Um, it's just very telling. It's not, not much of a quicker way to, they say that there's no quicker way to humble a man than to ask him about his prayer life. And I, I would add that, uh, his prayer life and his spending habits. <laughs> so how about a breather? Yeah, how about a breather? We're looking for the headhunter. Unless taking a breather, was that a hint that I should go sleep at the end and then he will appear? These games sometimes do that. Search for the headhunter. I guess, should I just start talking to people? That's how a classic JRPG would work. You gotta just start talking to townspeople. Oh, but I don't have the option to talk to everybody. Well, do you... Welcome to the crow's... Thank you. You boys must be hungry. I just want to uh, talk. So what would you like to know? Okay, that's kind of cool. Nearby parking spots, okay. Okay, note to self, I need to talk to people that work in diners. Because those might be fast travel points I'm unlocking, too. Procurement points, I mean, all of this is good. For my collecting desires. But, no new information, okay. How about this? I think you're up to the task? No. Uh, I'm definitely not up to the task. I... Be careful. Alright, thank you. Are you the headhunter? No. What would that say? Check? Check. Oh, check this. No. Most intriguing. Knocked. Let's see. I can eat a horse. Uh, let's talk to this person. How are you today? Um, no. Bye. Bye now. I don't think you have anything to... I guess I'm going to take my friend's advice and sleep. Wait. Oh, man, he just leaped onto that. <laughs> Kaboom! <laughs> All right, let's stay here. Oh, good. Yeah, one room, please. It's bedtime. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I didn't check my timing. My timing could be horribly off. I need to check that or it's going to bother me. So let's try it this way. We'll go... Check. Ooh. Check. One more time. Check. Oh, man, no, no, no. I gotta delay me some more. Hang on a second, guys. Oh, wait, no, not delay me. I gotta, I gotta be faster? Is that it? Let's just try this. Let's try it. All right, let's see. Check. Oh man, no. So I'm yeah. So I need to delay me some more.
All right, this might have been overkill. We'll see here. And let's see, check. Oh, close. Check. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And check. That's pretty good. Check. All right, we'll call that good. All right. Thanks for your patience there. Sorry, guys. Uh, Rugged Warrior says, uh, Final Fantasy 16 looks interesting. And I agree. Um, I, I want to see combat this E3. Uh, I want to see the combat system. It looks like it's going to be more of this kind of combat, which would not be my first choice. What about you, sir? Oh, he's got a question mark. Look who it is. I really owe you boys one. Uh, yes, I will hand this envelope to Dave. Two. <laughs> Can't seem to catch a break. Are you the headhunter? Now looks like they found another one. Wait, uh... Found another what? Tag. Us hunters keep them on our person at all times as identification. What? In case you forget who you are? More like so no one else forgets who they were. Hunters lead a life of danger. Sometimes these tags are the only things that make it back in one piece. It's our job to deliver them to the families of the fallen. As it were, I came out here to do just that. <sighs> if y'all happen to find any tags lying around out there, you do me a favor and send them my way. Yeah, sure. Word is somebody spotted a tag around these parts. Try asking the local tipster. He'll point you in the right direction. Okay, I did it. Gather intel about the area. Didn't I do kind of do that already? Gather intel. Oh, maybe I go over this blue check. Stuff. They certainly carry emotional weight. We'd best find and return them. And give the families peace of mind. Let's start by following up on that hot tip. Man, that smells good. Well, Kai. You want some? Okay, Kyle Fritz says, uh, anyways, out of curiosity, what all consoles do you have? Um, I have... Let me see here. Um, I've got the Retron 77, which lets me play Atari 2600 games. I've got the Retron 5, which allows me to play NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. Um, and I do actually have an NES, but I, I typically don't use it. Um, I do have a PlayStation 2 that's still kicking, um, that I get out now and then. I've used on num many streams before. Um, a place, I got an Xbox 360, a PlayStation 4, um, I'm playing all, uh, the games but one tonight on a PlayStation 5, uh, I have a PlayStation TV which plays PSP and Vita games, um, I think that's it, I think that's it, well, I'm, yeah, I've, I've, well, I've got, and I've got a Vita and a, uh, DS Lite. And that is the extent. Uh, let's see here. Order when Do I want to eat anything? HP boost. I don't think I need anything, any of these things yet. Thanks for your business. It's interesting though. I'm a little bit more primed for games that want you to eat for temporary buffs now that I've played so much Monster Hunter World. I think that before Monster Hunter, I would have. Not really like that very much. Oh, wait, I guess I'm not done with this guy. Welcome. You boys must be hungry. Happy to tell you about the area. Oh, there we go. Okay. Good.
All right, gonna go look for this dog tag. Be careful. I will. Thank you. So let's see on the old map. Where did that thing go? Was this the marker? I'd... Actually, you know what? Maybe I should look at quests. Gone hunting. It's still a level five quest, so. Yeah, I can do this. My guys are level seven. And it's only 700 some feet away, so. Let's do it to it. Can I jump this fence? Yeah! Yeah, just last night I played one of the first missions where you come across the first giant monster, like I think it's one of the summon monsters in the game, and it's really grand and epic. The music swells, and it's a huge monster that flies up, and it's like a just an epic, awe-inspiring, really, kind of moment. They just reminded me, again, you know, that's, that's what I want in a Final Fantasy game, so it was cool that they delivered. It came from there. So, um, any bargain hunters watching right now? Um, I'd be curious to hear if, you, if there's any memorable sales or deals that you got from waiting to uh, buy something until at some point after its initial release. I always remember back in Maybe college. This way? I bought some RPG books from one store that was li just liquidating them, getting rid of them really, really cheap. And then, like three doors down, City. there was another used store that was that bought them and gave me s more store credit per book than I paid in cash. Uh, at the store that I bought them from, three doors down. And there was a video game that I wanted to get at that used entertainment store, so I was happy to get trade credit for it. And so I got that video game completely for free. Uh, the game itself was about $20, I think, used. $15 or $20. And I spent less than $5 buying the books from the other store that was clearing them out to sell them and get the trade credit. And, uh... And... And I, yeah, I spent less than five dollars. And I was able to buy more than just that game, too. I mean, it was, uh... That was great. I'll never forget that deal. You just gotta work the system. My uh, sisters and I, and, and my wife now for years, have jokingly referred to Come my out, tendency to look for bargains and to seemingly sometimes have bargains find me as the France and cheap gene. I was raised in a home where my parents were pretty frugal and we did not get new things, new technology of any kind at release. We always waited until it was pretty old news. Found one already, huh? You done good. Just picking up the pieces, I guess. Well, try to keep your spirits up. Even though I ain't one to talk, I beat myself up over the lives of the hunters I couldn't save. That's what each one of these tags means to me. They hurt. But if I let that grief keep me from looking for them, then their tags and their lives will be forgotten forever. And that'd hurt more than anything. Yeah, guess you're right. Well, that's why I tell all my hunters to collect any tag they see, and I expect you boys to go out and do the same. All right. Ooh, ten high potions. Not feeling a need for them yet, but again, like I said, I've I've got the difficulty set to easy right now. Just kind of taking a casual uh, mini tour of this game. 
Now, it's, that one's like about a mile away. Speak to Sid at the garage. Let's, uh, can I summon my car? I, there must be a way I can do that. Because I think I need my car in order to uh, fast travel. I could be wrong. There's a parking spot. Oh, return to the spot where you last rested. That's cool. Yes. Oh, wait, no. That's, I'm, I'm in the spot where I last rested. Dang it. So, no. <laughs> Although, let's try this. Let's just see if they spawn my car when I do this. That'd be cool if they did. Doesn't look like they did. Oh, well. All right. Well, how far away is that on my map here? Blockade. Oh, hang on. Look at that. Return to car. Yes. Come on, Pater. Come on. Read the words. Let's see here. Ooh, Gabriel Stinson, Bargain Hunter, says, I picked up Mad Max for $10 a few months ago. That's a great deal. That's a great deal. Uh, because I have a lot of good things to say about that game. That's a great game, if you haven't finished it, to have in your backlog. After all along. So all talk of peace was merely a pretext. They played my father for a fool. Don't kid yourself. Reggie wasn't born yesterday. Lucis got dealt a losing hand and your old man played it the best he could. He saw this coming a mile away and he wasn't gonna go down without a fight. They're cutting in see scenes from the movie that came out with this game. He just wasn't enough. They did that in the Royal Edition to help fill in story that players felt was missing in the just the base game experience. You need something else, you talk to Core. I can't even remember the last time I saw Reggie. Feels like a lifetime ago. Okay. Uh, Rugged Warrior says, I wanted to get Moss and Astrobot Rescue. Glad they were free for the play at home. So glad I waited. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, there's not many deals better than free. <laughs> Except the ones where, I don't know, you get paid to accept the game. <laughs> All right, speak to sit at the garage. I think I've done that. So... Cora left a message. Oh. Said he'll wait for you in the tombs. There to the northwest of here. That's the short ways past the outpost. Find that first. Okay. Interesting toy you got there. This? It's just something we picked up after taking out some Imperials. Well, I'll be Crown City Maid. If you like, I can make this puppy better. Give it more oomph. How? I can mod it for you. Mod it? Look, I got diddly squat to do what with Cindy taking care of the garage. If you can find the parts, I can do the work for you. And where do we get these parts? Down over that away among the discarded scraps. Pick up whatever looks useful and bring them to me. Okay, so that was a, that's a side quest, right? Okay, so that is a 1.10 miles. So we are going to take the car now. Oops, wrong button. There we go. 
And sure, auto to, oh, look at that. The side quest and the main quest are in the same spot. Here we go. One of the reasons I, I thought, oh, this would be good for streaming, too, is because it has some downtime. <laughs> you got some driving to do here. <laughs> they will have sealed off the city by now. What do you think it's like inside? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. We'll see for ourselves in time. Indeed. Merely a question of when. I can't believe the crystal's gone. The bastards took it all. And we'll take it back. This is far from over. I think I've always kind of had problems following the stories in uh, Final Fantasy games. Um, I think it probably started out with just a little bit of strangeness in the translation. And then at some point, I think it is a writing issue. Uh, I remember Final Fantasy XII, one of my favorite Final Fantasy games. Love the world and especially the combat system in that game. But that story is like so much political who's who to keep track of and stuff that I, I just can't. <laughs> and this one, every once in a while they're saying stuff, I'm like... I don't quite remember what that's about. I don't know what that's about. But I remember the basics, you know? His father died. He's the prince of this country that was about to sign a peace treaty. Did not work out. And his father was killed. And so now he's uh, trying to get to the bottom of what's what and try to make, trying to make things right. Something. That's, that's the gist of it. And uh, the, the more personal they can make the stakes, the more I can invest, even if I don't understand a lot of the details or I don't follow a lot of the details. Kyle Fritz is the only free game that I remember is the Lego Batman DS game that I found outside of a subway. Oh, wow. And this must be the outpost Sid mentioned. Yeah, it looks like a hub for hunters. Maybe they know something. Hello. Your Highness, I'm glad you're safe. Monica. Thank you. Where are all the others? Most of the Crown's Guard didn't make it. It was all we could do to escort Lady Iris out of the city. Dustin is... Iris? I would have thought Iris. ...seeing her the rest of the way to Lestalem. I owe you guys big time. Head for the Marshal awaits. Gabriel Simpson says, I got Ratchet and Clank when it was part of Stay at Home. So far, my son and I really like it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that stay at home initiative. Um, or play at home. Play at home, I think it's called. Really cool and kind of surprising that Sony's doing that a, a second year. I wouldn't be surprised if they're done after this year. While some hold out hope, the Oracle still lives. A grim silence continues to linger. But they've said there's more to come. Um,. I imagine that'll come sometime after the download period for Horizon Zero Dawn is over, which I think goes until the 19th. So if you're watching this live, you still have time. Boys are headed, but y'all mind picking it up if it's on your way? It could be earlier though. So if you haven't downloaded it yet and you're planning on it, don't wait. Join Core at the Tomb of the Wise. Oh, I remember this from my first playthrough of the first five hours. <laughs> in fact, the Tomb of the Wise, I think this is one of the last things I did. I think I spent a good amount of time dinking around in the open world with this guy. instead of mainlining the... the uh, City. Then Hammerhead? Then the Royal Tomb? His nickname should have been Core the Restless. Mainlining the story missions. Keep your distance or die! Vicious varmints and dangerous demons! No, not as catchy as Core the Immortal. Making it out of insomnia only adds to his legend. Well... Fortune favors the bold. Huh? The wise and the stylishly dressed. I'm thinking. He's made it out right. All those battles alive. Oop. These have got to be baddies, right? Stay sharp. Let's do it. K 
Can you? They're airborne. How do I? Uh... Anybody have any ranged attacks? I don't know how we're... I guess... Waiting for them to swoop down, maybe. Almost. There we go. Oh, okay, so I just fulfilled the side quest. That's cool. Wonder what drew him to the royal tomb. A morbid curiosity for the late kings of Lucis. Only one way to find out. More swoopy... What are they called? Dagger? I don't know. Really? Let's see, how does this... Let's try that. I was gonna try point warping. I haven't quite got the, uh... I got a handle on the strategic applications of that. Go get him, Noctis! You know what, maybe not. Let's just... Let's just go, guys. I don't think we gotta worry about these things. Let's go in and find the Marshal. Marshal. At last, Your Highness. Yeah. Tell me what I'm here for. The power of kings passed from the old to the new through the bonding of souls. One such soul lies before you. To claim your forebear's power is your birthright and duty as king. My duty as king of what? Now is not the time to question your calling. <laughs> A king is sworn to protect his people. And yet he chose to protect only one prince. Was that his calling? Forsake the masses to spare his own son? How long will you remain the protected? The king entrusted the role of protector to you. Entrusted it to me? Then why didn't he tell me that? Why did he stand there smiling as I left? Why? That day, he didn't want you to remember him as the king. In what time you had left, he wanted to be your father. <laughs> he always had faith in you, that when the time came, you would ascend for the sake of your people. Guess he left me no choice. I do have Netflix right now, and the movie that goes with this is on Netflix, and <laughs> I might end up watching it at some point. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's see here. While we're paused here, uh, Ravenous Spectre, welcome, um, says, any plans to play Resident Evil Village? No. <laughs> if you want to watch me play a Resident Evil game, and imagine what it would be like to watch me play Resident Evil Village. You can watch my review of Resident Evil uh, 7, um, which I did when that came out. That, I typically do not play horror games. It's funny because I like the horror genre a lot, especially if it's like creature feature type stuff, weird aliens or weird monsters of some kind. Love Jeepers Creepers, love monst uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, stuff like that. I'm rewatching the Alien movies with my dad um, in recent months, having a great time with that. 
So I, I love that. But once you put a controller in my hand and give me agency to move around and do things in a horror environment, it's not my idea of fun. It is not my idea of fun. <laughs> um, unless it's a horror environment that's not designed to actually be scary. An example would be Castlevania or Darkest Dungeon. I did a live stream in October uh, 2020 themed around hor non-scary horror games. And so those kinds of horror experiences in video games, I am going to eat up as long as the gameplay is conducive to my crappy skill set. Uh, but no, I'm not going to play Final, Final Fantasy Village. Sorry <laughs> if that is disappointing. <laughs>